Hello everyone, how's it going? I am the Average Guy 1983 and today I'm going to be doing the test tone to find out what my distortion point is on my 2019 Ford Flex head unit. Um, I'm using an LC7i. Right now everything is not connected. It's still just the radio. I'm going to find out what the distortion point is and I thought it would be informer for you since this device also has the voltage on the side. So this way you might be able to help yourself by being able to, um, to you know, fix your own distortion point on your Ford Flex if you have the SEL with this thing which it kind of let me know that around 20, volume 20, volume 21 the sound sounded clear, volume 22 I can hear distortion on the tweeters on the stock tweeters so we're going to find out right now at a thousand hertz no actually at 40 hertz you can see here okay and then here are my settings under sound everything is flat because that's exactly where I wanted it because all my frequency settings are in EQ settings and stuff are going to be done from the DSP so let me go back so again this is 40 Hertz okay at 0 DB we're going to start it over and we're going to find out how many volts RMS does it take to get distortion at 40 Hertz so here we go I'm starting at volume 3 volume 4 5 6 we got some one volt at around volume 10 there 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, volume 20, 21, oh I got a little bit of distortion there, 22, alright so volume 22 we're getting uh, distortion at 10.3 volts, okay so remember write that shit down, 10.3 volts at 40 hertz you're getting distortion. That is volume number 22 on the head unit, on the Ford Flex. Turn it down to volume 21. You get 9.9 .9 volts of clean RMS voltage. So, and that's at 40 hertz. Now let's try out the um, 1000 hertz. Okay, this is 1000 hertz at 0 dB. Oops, sorry. 1000 hertz at 0 dB. We have 4.6 volts at what volume? Volume 22. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Again, check that out. 10.3 volts RMS at 1000 hertz, which was the same 10.3 volts at 40 hertz. You got distortion on the head unit. Unfortunately, since this one it far exceeds the distortion point, um, that the uh, 40 Hertz does we're going to go with volume 21 as my safe number to be able to crank my system all the way to 21 22 will be considered distortion at 40 Hertz so because 40 Hertz gave me distortion at volume 22 versus 27 on a thousand Hertz we're going to uh, do the entire system at volume 21 which is the cleanest highest output I can get on this head unit with the LC7 so I'm going to try this out, okay, so hear me out for a minute, I'm going to try all this out, if this doesn't work out with the LC7, then I'm going to go ahead and return the LC7 and buy a um, Maestro DSR1 and the uh, FD02 harness and I'm going to redo my whole system using that instead. Uh, but again, volume 21 is your safe number, volume 22 is distortion at 40 hertz, at um, 1000 hertz the distortion point is number 27 so you want to go with whichever frequency distorts first and set your gains based on that so volume 21 safe number at 40 Hertz volume 22 distortion so I'm gonna keep my stereo at um, I'm gonna keep my stereo at volume 21 as my max number and I'm gonna go and tune my entire system based off of this volume I'm not gonna move this volume at all it's gonna stay at 21 so when I start fixing all the outputs and everything on the DSPs and also these uh, the more engineering SMD uh, devices here when I start setting everything up when I turn it to number 22 I should get distortion showing up on these meters here once I program them so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on everything and then I'm gonna come back with the end results because it's a lot of work for me to show you guys everything I really wanted to do that but it's a lot of work. I still need to finish this door here and I need to bring my computer and it's dark. It's dark outside. It's 749. 
and uh, who knows if I'm even going to be able to finish today. So, um, yeah, let me get to the rest of the installation and we'll go from there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today is day two. I couldn't finish the system update or the uh, software like I was hoping to for the tuning. So I'm doing it today and uh, uh, I came up through a problem uh, on the amplifiers. I couldn't get the C7 3.5 inch drivers to work. And it was a user error. This was a, a my fault, which was a simple fix. Make sure that if you're gonna use these HD amps or any four channel amplifier, that your inputs are set from two channel to four channel. Uh, once I flip from two channel to four channel on the amplifier itself, I was able to get the front and rear uh, C7 3.5 inch drivers to work, which allowed me to tune it. So what I'm going to do here for you guys today, which I hope you guys can excuse the glare, but I'm working outside with my computer here and it's really, really, really tough to try to get this going. So um, I'm doing a uh, 1000 hertz at 0 dB track for the rear door speakers, which says equalizer 7 and 8. Now the way this is hooked up, if you guys can kind of see it, it is hooked up to channels 1 and 2 and I have... And the bottom where it says equalizer, I have that under 1 and 2 for the tweeter, 3 and 4 for the mid-range, 5 and 6 for the front door speakers, and 7 and 8 for the rear door speakers for equalization. Now, you need to do this um, so that you can be able to set the uh, proper gain setting. So as you guys can kind of see, you see some red color there. That's because I have the volume at 21. So what I need to do here is... For some reason, JL's uh, system detected distortion at 21 and not 22 like the SMD. So excuse the mess with the, the kids. There's kids in the background, so I apologize for that. But um, if you drop this down all the way, the DB part here on the preset, drop it down to 4 and do the same thing on this side. Well, this side will automatically do it because they're chained. You see how right here, the left and right is chained up together. So you can kind of kind of see it there. It's chained up. So what we do here now is we drop the volume from 21 to 20. You see how the distortion disappeared? Now if I bring it back up to 21, you get distortion. Drop it back down to 20, no distortion. Now your, um, your DSP is set up. Now the best thing to do so that you can set your amplifier's gain control is by going to where it says tune here on the side let me see right here on the side go to tune click on it and on the bottom make sure that you set your frequency properly here's how i have mine so i have 5000 hertz as the lowest frequency to off which is the maximum of 20,000 hertz on the mid-range drivers which are also on the a pillars i have those set from 500 hertz as the lowest and 5000 as the highest if you do a um above like 5000 hertz or above 6000 it will cross both the uh the tweeter and the mid-range if you have both of them on the same channel and it'll cut um it'll end up uh, shutting down the mid-range driver because it did it to me so um i had to make sure to double check everything before i decided to go on and uh try to get um the frequencies here set up so on the front doors, it is set to 80 hertz as the lowest frequency I want coming out of the speakers and the highest is 500 hertz. See how the cutoff from 500 meets over here on this cutoff or the starting point? Same thing for the bottom speakers. Now that all of that is set, I can go ahead and click on... Uh, and the reason why it shows uh, minus 12 dB is because I have the mid-range, I mean the, um, the mute button on. But if I change it, it'll go back to normal so what I want to do now is change the source back to regular music which in my case I'm gonna to have to lower this down because if I don't lower it um, I'm going to get some copy strike especially playing E40 but now it's back to normal here everything is working and you can kind of hear it so anyways so that's about it let me go ahead and now that I have all of this done, what I need to do here now, since all the EQs are already set with their trim, I'm going to send to the Tweak 88 
because I already did the rear one and that's already set so because now if you want to do this here for example um, let me see turn that up you can actually send the mid-range left and the mid-range right under this same uh, equalizer one and equalizer two from the front uh, channels from the top here that you see here at this area right here but because I wanted them to have their own separate EQ so I can tune them nicely um, I have them separated so that's a convenience but you don't have to do that but again if you happen to have your left tweeter and mid-range on this little channel here right here together and you try to cross them over um, where the uh, the mid-range may overlap the tweeter it can shut the um, the mid-range down it did it on me I don't know if it does it normally but it did it on me so when I switched them like this separately it didn't do that anymore so now that that's done again I think I already sent it but I'll send it again anyways because this is already done so now this program is all set up now I can go ahead and exit out of this program I can save it as zone one yes overwrite it and then go ahead and cancel afterwards okay just cancel that and then close it okay there we go and now it's done so let me go ahead and start the uh the distortion tuning on the amplifiers and we'll get back to the ending of this video so i just wanted to show you guys how you do that now again you have to have your frequency set up already before you start your tuning on your amplifier for the gain setup and again volume 21 was detected as distortion volume 20 was detected as clean so i'm just going to go ahead and stick with that instead so on the sub level again 40 hertz 21 should give me distortion 20 should give me clean signal so i would have to do that with the output meters again so um just so you guys can see here are the output meters already on so they're not tuned yet so i need to uh, pop these off real quick and then tune them from the back with the little screwdriver as i'm setting the game this is why i don't have the door speaker connected yet which i ended up having to go with a quarter inch ring the rings that i made out of three eighths uh was too thick and was sitting the speaker right against the grill of the door so just stick with the quarter of an inch of a of a speaker adapter to be safe and again the um the subwoofer in the back is not connected either because i need to set the gains on that first and i don't want to blow out the subs so um let me go ahead and get all of that set up and then i'll let you guys hear what it sounds like just as a flat signal and um i will do some tuning off camera later on but just to get me set up as a daily driver type deal um we'll do it like this and um again i have everything working everything is working the door speakers too you can kind of see it there in a way see how you can kind of see the uh speaker there it's right against the door like about half an inch before reaching the end so um even the uh, the fast rings i purchased didn't want to work on this so okay let me go ahead um, i know i'm talking too much so i sorry about that let me go ahead and um change that right now let me lower this down to zero before i get a scop uh, copy tr a strike whatever but yeah let me go ahead and do that and then we'll get to the back of the d pillars and get this going all right everyone we are finally at the ending of the conclusion now if you see the camera look kind of weird don't worry i'm using my gopro hero 5 because my gopro hero 5 with this microphone here this is a rode video mic pro here are my settings it is zero db and the signal is flat at the top so zero db and signal flat at the top so that's what we're going with because i want you guys to hear the most natural sound possible if it's possible at all with this microphone to pick things up uh, but the gopro hero 5 does really good on picking up bass so um right off the back um i did have some issues with the tweak 88 and the issues was that i couldn't get the uh dd1 to uh detect the 1000 hertz for the front doors or the d pillar speakers or a pillar speakers on the hd amps 
Um, I don't know why I couldn't get it to detect it at all. There's nothing wrong with the cables, but I ordered some new cables. Hopefully that'll work next time. But um, when I connected those same cables directly to the output leads of the head unit, like the ones that are connected to the LC7, I got a signal of a thousand hertz. But when I went ahead and I reconnected it to the um, outputs of the uh, amplifiers by disconnecting the speakers and, you know, connecting the... Uh, the output so I can tune the, the amp, set up, you know, set up the gains, it wouldn't detect it at all, period. Like it would have no reaction to either 1000 hertz or 40 hertz. So I don't know what the hell happened. But again, if I connect those same plugs into the uh, head units wires that are the, you know, the outputs from the radio directly to the LC7, I actually do get a 1000 hertz signal and a 40 hertz signal. So I'm not sure if it's something with the, T, uh, the Tweak 88 that's preventing me from doing that. So the amplifiers had to be tuned by ear. So um, the front door speakers do need to be dropped down a bit from the gain. I probably have to drop maybe a decibel or two. On it so I'm gonna do that but I wanted to give you guys a demo of the system now the system in honesty it sounds really good however I do feel like it's overpriced what I paid I feel like it's a lot and um, everything except for the subwoofer the subwoofer is kick-ass for it being a tiny box with the 10 w6 v3 in it and an hd 750 it does sound a little overpowering for the sub so something like a uh, like a 500 watt amp or even a, a 600 watt amp will probably be more than enough for this subwoofer but it sounds freaking great so let's go ahead and give you guys a demo of the speaker so what i want you guys to hear first is how the sub sounds So let me take you now to the C7 3.5 inch driver. Okay, now the tweeter. Okay, you see how clear that sounds? That sounds amazingly clear. So let's go ahead and go to the front. And I'm gonna sit down in the front. I'm gonna sit down in the middle row seat so you guys can see how everything sounds all around. Overall, the system sounds really good, but again, I do feel like the C5s are a better choice and a better bang for your buck using the uh, passive crossovers instead of going crazy full active. Um, we'll talk about that just a little bit more, but let me go ahead and fix this real quick. There we go. All right, so in here I have the uh, audio control epicenter knob there. It's off, but the light is low, but it looks brighter on the screen. Same thing with um, the uh, DRC-205 there for the rear, DRC-205 for the front. Everything is at max because I'm controlling everything from the radio. Now my radio does go up to volume 20 with a clean signal. Volume 21 ended up being not so great of a uh, of a signal. So it's weird because the DD1 the distortion detector detected um, distortion at volume 22 out of 21. And you guys seen that earlier in the video that I made. But for some reason on the tweak 88 it detected distortion at 21 and 20 was clear and i demonstrated that for you guys on the tweak 88 so um i still have to mess around with a couple things but i get like no distortion i don't get any kind of weird hissing sound i don't get any kind of um uh crackling sound or engine noise or nothing like that so this worked out great overall in general so let me go ahead and change the song real quick and I'm gonna turn it up to 15. And let me show you again my settings. See that everything is flat. However, if you kind of hear the clicking sound of the radio, it does sound louder. And it's the same issue with the Maestro DSR-1. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but let me give you guys a demo real quick. Uh, my radio can go up to 20, but I'm going to go up to 15, so, you know, because of distortion issues. Oops.
Here we go, guys. Here's at the door. face the microphone towards me like this and I'm gonna sit down in the front so you guys can hear the back me to sit in the middle so you guys can hear how it sounds like from the middle row Let me go ahead and open up the trunk so you guys can get a closer look of the sub. But overall, this system sounds great. It's just that I still feel like, you know, it could have costed a whole lot less. I didn't want to ignore the third row all right so let me go ahead and lower this down now okay so I dropped it down to number three all right so again like I said earlier I couldn't use the DD1 to tune the system and I feel pretty crappy about it because I had to tune everything by ear does it sound good yes it does it sounds very good is it worth the money that i pay for each driver in all honesty i don't think it is i feel like it should be half the price of what it is so don't bash me just because i don't like how the price of these speakers for the quality that they are um i honestly still need to go back to the tune software and tune a couple things on the speakers and try to start making some changes i also need to do time alignment and try to mess with the software more but in generally speaking having the signal straight up flat it sounds really good the tweeters sound really nice but again i still think that something like the c5 speakers three ways with the crossover is a a better alternative than um than the c7s so if you can get your hands on the c5s and some hdms i think it would be in really good hands versus having to use something like a dsp or the tweak 88 uh, 
on my Park Avenue when I do my system on that car that's exactly what I'm gonna do I'm going to avoid using uh, the tweak 88 and most likely just use the HD amps with the um, passive crossovers and have my system sound good that way um, I had them before and they sounded great the way they were but again you know don't get me wrong these speakers don't sound bad they sound really nice I just feel like they're a bit overpriced for what they perform or how they perform um, but again like I said earlier I still need to set up you know um, a separate preset for time alignment for the driver's side time alignment for the passenger side as a separate preset so that would be three presets and um, I want to um, uh, mess with the tune system a little bit more but again this is just a flat signal straight up flat and um, it sounds nice though overall so I hope you guys didn't get tired of my uh, of my uh, beats that I made but it sounds really good in the car I record at 0 dB so even though you've seen the output meter right here um, kind of reaching that yellow line uh, it's not properly tuned like I said earlier I had to tune this one and this one by ear in order for um, in order for it to start working right so that kind of sucked you know that bummed me out so I bought some new leads because I'm not sure if there's an issue with the leads so I bought new leads from SMD and I'm gonna get them delivered and hopefully then I can tune the amps um, again though when it came to the amp tuning uh, because I had the tweak 88 at 0 DB I did not have to set anything on the HD amps for the uh, this HD 600 slash fours. All the amps, the gain is literally all the way down. So um, I may have to lower down the um, the zero dB output coming out of the Tweak 88 to kind of smooth things out a little bit on the speakers. But I'll do that some other time off camera. Overall, am I satisfied with the system? Yeah, I'm satisfied with the system. I'm very happy with what I have, but I still feel like I overpaid for the um, for the C7 speakers. When it comes to the subwoofer for the Vortflex Stealth Box, that thing sounds really, really damn good for what it is. Um, it's of course I don't have the 10W3 that was originally in there. I have a 10W6 V3 for so that I can have lower bass frequency. The 10W3, uh, the 10W6 V3 sounds amazing in that Ford Flex Stealth Box. And I feel that if you were to get yourself a Stealth Box for your Ford Flex, you would be really satisfied using it with an HD750, maybe even a, um, a VXI uh, 1000 slash 5. Gives you 600 watts RMS for the subwoofer and you get 75 watts RMS for your front doors and rear doors. I think that's a really good setup and I probably would have gone with that route if I wouldn't have been so crazy about trying to do three ways but that's just my opinion though so I hope you guys um, like the video I'm sorry that I didn't get to get into detail and the truth is that it was because of that I, I was gonna go and show you guys how to tune the uh, or how to set the gains on the amplifiers in the rear but um, I couldn't I, I couldn't get a signal at all period from the uh, SMD DD1 plus so it was weird because you can hear the speakers playing if I connect the plug back to the uh, to the uh, quick disconnect wire. If I disconnect it and I put the little prongs onto the um, onto the amplifier's output, then I would get no signal. It would just say 0.9V, and it wouldn't show anything else, like detecting 1,000 hertz or detecting 40 hertz. It, it it wouldn't do it. So I don't know why that happened, but um, I'm gonna eventually figure it out. But yeah, hopefully you guys are happy with the results as well. After hearing the bass output, there's nothing modified on the microphone or anything like that. Like you guys seen, it's literally zero dB at the top, um, and in the I mean in the bottom is zero dB, and at the top is a flat signal. There's no curve, there's no high pass, nothing's on it. So this is just direct, fresh, you know, flat signal. So hopefully you guys get to enjoy the way the video sounded on the GoPro Hero Five. This is it though. Uh, this is the end of the JL Audio C7 system install. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, I'll give you guys updates on the flex in the near future. And that's about it for now. Thanks for watching. Peace.